cool. So today we have Tinks joining us from uh, Crypto Fairies. And um, yeah, absolutely love it having you. Um, thank you for joining us. No worries. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I just want to sort of dive right in. And I mean, you're, I found your profile on, on, on Twitter and I've been following you for a while and I absolutely love the stuff that you guys are doing. It just looks like you guys are having so much fun. And mm -hmm. um, um, I just wanted to ask what got you into the space, you know, blockchain, crypto, all that. How, how did that happen? Um, it was about, God, how old was I? It was about nine years ago. And wow. um, I actually used Silk Road, so the um, website, we used the black market website. And um, I actually bought my Bitcoin for a post office. It was so dodgy at the time. Um, and, like handed cash over and didn't really know what was happening. Um, then every, ever since then, I just ended up like Googling it and seeing the evolution of it. Um, obviously, Fairy Godmother, the other half of the business, she has worked in finance all of her life. So she taught me a lot about like how the financial system works and like financial literacy. So that sort of got me involved in the whole process. And then that was sort of like just my entry into it sort of thing, yeah. yeah from a finance background, that's, that's yeah, from a financial yeah, literacy, that's like interesting. I 20 um, years in banking, so she always taught me like all different things about like how to handle money, what to look for, how it works basically, like mm, you can't really mm, about yeah. it, but like all until now, but that's how it works. Mm, so basically all the stuff you don't learn in school. <laughs> Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like my little brother the other day even had to ask me what tax was and he's like turning 16 and i just it's crazy they don't say it in school <laughs> yeah that is insane okay that's a pretty cool mm -hmm. step in like i mean and 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 when uh how long have you been in cardano like when it when did the switch into cardano come we started collecting on Cardano in 2021, in about May 2021, and then we launched our first project in February 2022. So we've been here since May 21, so about nearly a year and a half now. You guys really like, you know, dress up and 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 put the personas forward, which is amazing. Which is really why, <laughs> like, I was drawn. Seconds to get people's psychology, don't you? you? Get seven seconds to get people's attention. So, like, with onboarding and stuff, I think really good just to have that quick you're going to look at us because we're like whimsical fairies running around like yeah yeah and I, and I like that you know like um from my perspective at least it's like uh, you know i've been touting that we need to we need to put our faces up there i know it's like you know it's decentralized and you don't really need to do that but it's also there's so much uh lack of trust in this space as well that if you know who you're dealing with like i think that does wonders for a project I think it's like people's money as well. It's kind of like that hard like game where you've kind of got to show who you are or like at least show part of your company or the structure because you're taking money off of people. So you're receiving something off of people. It's got that obligation. If you want to stay around, I guess. What what projects do you love and follow like in the space? Um, so we don't like we do, we don't really post a whole heap about like what we have and what we have in our wallet and stuff like that. We just no. like don't really want to influence anything. But um, our fairy friends are at Stakeable and the Ape Society, and like from day dot, like the community at the Ape Society have been like bar none, like so nice to us, so intellectual. Like really have that discussion of intellectual conversation. Um, and then uh, we got awarded part of the community. We we're part of Dork East community. And they've just been so welcoming. Even one of the apes has written a fairy tale story with our fairy friends in it. And they wrote an article on us. So that's one project that we really, really love. Um, there's so many other ones, but I hate like specificizing. Yeah. So like, if I could just say the Ape Society, that'd be great because obviously they have the fairy friends of staking as well, which is so awesome. Um. Okay, so any interesting ideas around blockchain tech that you think uh, hasn't been tried yet? And, and usually we phrase this question, uh, you know, what do you think is missing in Cardano? Or anything that you think should be the next development or direction? Um, probably a more easier to connect a mobile app, like because when you leave Eternal and you have to leave and go to a different app. And then, I mean, I guess you can use the D app browser in it, but just when I've used Eve stuff to connect wallets before, it's just been really streamlined. And someone said something to me on a Twitter space once and they said, how many clicks is it? And I was like, that's the question that is like nowadays you need because people 
people don't have time or the attention spans mm. are so small. So just that streamline stuff, maybe a bit of marketing, like, but not in the sense of like getting Instagram influencers or Twitter influencers or something like that. There is tactful marketing as well. Like you don't have to go out and pay big brands to put the things everywhere. Like, and I know that's against Cardano, but to get mass audiences to, I feel like we need to focus more out of the ecosystem than just in the ecosystem. Like how yeah. you said real pie, like get in the streets and obviously some projects like your own are going to get people off the streets. And we talk to a lot of people in real life as well regarding like the blockchain and stuff, but I feel like that might need to expand more. And that would probably mm. be it. Um, you know, in a male dominant world, like which, we also feel from our side because you know obviously we're predominantly uh, in our male team we do try to be more inclusive and, and you know not be very obvious about it because you know you do you don't say that you do if that's the way to do it right but how can it be more inclusive how how can we you know i mean should there be a way for us to onboard more women into cardano is there a better way to do it i mean i have a kind of controversial like opinion on this subject just because like I just feel like it's a step backwards when we go women in blockchain, like a little bit of a step. For my logical, rational black brain, I just don't feel like if we're trying to work towards equality where we're both equal, to idolize, put something on a pedestal that separates the two entities. Like I've had to relearn, like a couple of my friends come out and they denounced everything, didn't have a gender anymore. I had to learn everything from scratch. I wasn't aware of everything, but I had to learn. And I would hate to think that my friend who transitioned from a male into a female, I would have to say to him, you can't come in my club because I don't know what you are and I don't know what you identify as. So when I had to teach my 16 year old brother and at his school, he's learning all these pronouns and he's learning how to be politically correct. I don't know how great it is in moving forward for that evolution to be like, hey, who are these women? I believe that there should be a space for women to go to to feel safe in a male dominated industry, don't get me wrong, but I don't know about the idolization because I feel like that is like a little bit backwards, like in the sort of sense of things, because I enjoyed more the panel that I did at Web3 Expo with about NFTs in business rather than the women in blockchain one, because it seems that they have this generic women in blockchain like panel at every single cryptocurrency event, but there's more pressing issues. And if a woman, a woman has an intellectual thought on that subject, why does it matter if they're a woman? Why do they have to be idolized? They're just a person and that person has a great view on that subject. So that's how I think of it because I just feel like evolutionary. We went through so many years of this political correctness and don't make us different. And now it's like, okay, let's go and put them over there. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's just like my like stupid, like uh, we're all equal, we are all one, we all love each other view. But that's how I look at it just because of my friends and what I've seen in real life. What is either one series, a book or a movie that you would recommend? Oh, I already like, I've looked over the questions before and this gets me so excited because I'm such a reader, but um, <laughs> everything that I've sort of based, like what I've talked about and like how like to understand people, this is the book that got me to that. It's called Surrounded, I've actually got it here. Yeah. yeah. It's called Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson. It's like, um, it's sort of like how to understand human behavior and it um, subcategorizes humans into four different color categories. Um, and most mm. people have like two majority of colors. Some people have three, but mm. the way that I read the book, it made me understand not only my family a lot more, but like people that I work with, like it just, it's Deloitte have done business chemistry based on like things like this book. So it's like how to put different workers together in different environments due to their personality and the color types that they have, because there is some colors that just completely clash and will not get on at all. So yeah, that is just, that was just solid, solid advice for so much in my life. 